In the Klondike gold fields of the Yukon Territory of Canada, you have a man by the name of Travis Delosky. He's working in a trench. And in this trench, you have this creek that is covered with permafrost that's sitting on the top layer. As Travis is chipping away at the rock hard ice, suddenly a crevice opens. Inside, he discovers something strange, some kind of creature. He sees a short tail, and at first he thinks it's a mummified buffalo calf. But as Travis looks more closely, they see something a buffalo doesn't have, a trunk. So he immediately calls his boss to try and figure out what the hell he just came across. So the boss comes down to see what Travis actually find, and he's shocked. He sees fur, and it looks like it died maybe an hour ago. So he immediately yells out for everyone in the trench to stop working. He takes some photos with his phone, and then he calls some local paleontologists to come in and inspect the scene. When they see the photos, they confirm the unbelievable. It's a baby woolly mammoth straight out of the Ice Age. And they are all hands on deck. And they have to act immediately, because once this woolly mammoth baby is exposed to the elements, it can start to deteriorate. And there's a storm coming that is going to totally flood out the trench. With moments to spare, they manage to get the woolly mammoth baby out. They carefully wrap it in a tarp, and then they transport it to a location where they actually have a ceremony with local indigenous elders. Gathered in a circle, the tribal elders offer a blessing and name the mammoth Nunchoga, which means big baby animal in their native Han language. With the clock ticking, scientists must examine the baby mammoth quickly before getting it into a freezer for preservation. But they're able to determine that Nunchoga is a female and she was only about a month old when she died. They estimate that she died around 30,000 years ago. The geology of where the mammoth is found indicates that she was walking across the grassland, strayed from her mother, and then she fell, gets stuck in the mud, and is preserved under tons of permafrost to be found by us thousands of years later. Incredibly, they find a piece of grass in the woolly mammoth's stomach. Fortunately, this means Nunchoga died quickly. While it's sad that Nunchoga only lived about a month, her discovery today is really incredible. This is the most intact, mummified Ice Age animal found in North America, if not the world. While a 30,000-year-old creature trapped beneath the ice might be fascinating, something terrifying lies in an otherwise enchanting setting, something that has locals afraid to go anywhere near it. This place is 25 miles south of Merida in an area surrounded by dense jungle. There's this little opening, this hole, which enters into a void. And inside this void is a drop into an abyss of watery darkness. It's called Sokwayum, and it's one of at least 40 cenotes, or underwater caves, that lie beneath this mysterious region. They collect so much naturally filtered groundwater that in the 13th century, the Mayans decide to build their new capital here, Mayapan. This walled city of like 17,000 people thrives for centuries, and it has dozens of life-sustaining cenotes inside the city. Most of them are within the walls of Mayapan, except for one, that for some reason, the walls zigzagged around and moved around to avoid having that one cenote inside their city, Sakwayu. They believe Sakwayum is a sacred place, a pathway to the underworld. The Maya also believe that this place is guarded by a feather-covered serpent with a horse's head who will snatch children who get too close. I've personally visited Mayapan, I wanted to go to Sakwayum, and every villager I have met have told me their story, that they have seen a snake-like creature that flies and has a horse head that is guarding that place, and I should not get anywhere close to Sakwayum. Is it possible that Sakwayum's legendary feathered serpent is real, or at least once was? In August of 2013, 
Archaeologists led by Dr. Bradley Russell attempt to find out. You can imagine that getting in and out of a sinkhole that has a 40-foot drop is quite difficult. So they basically have to be lowered down into the water, and then they can start their dive. But remember, if something goes wrong, you got to be hoisted back out that 40 feet. And you're being slowly lowered. Now you're in this dark, murky water, and you know you have to actually penetrate through and go into a cave. As Bradley and his team scuba through these tight passages, their tanks are hitting the limestone. I mean, it's so tight. That's where they discover human skeletons. Could these be ancient victims of the notorious serpent monster? There are just dozens of skeletons of men and women in this place. In Mayan civilization, we do not have evidence of mass graves or mass burials. These people seem to be in the prime of life. There's nothing that shows, for example, damage through warfare to the skeletons. And there's nothing that suggests that they're victims of human sacrifice. So the fact that in this cenote there are dozens and dozens of human remains makes it a bit of a mystery. We don't know why these people ended up in this cenote.